Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, April 18th, and today we'll cover the trades for Yield Max Funds, Tesla, Coney, Misty, and Viddy. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the markets are down. Well, yesterday they were bad. Why? I don't know. Jerome Powell opened his mouth, something like that. But either way, you know, hang in there, guys. It'll get better. We will have better days. So what happened yesterday as far as yield max goes, there was two trades. There was a trade on uh, TSLY, well, trades, and there were trades on Misty. First, we'll cover TSLY, uh, but just, just an FYI, me personally, I'd made no trades, no options trades, no swing trades. Um, honestly, I was way too busy with work, to be honest. But I, I did look at the market. I saw it was pretty ugly. I'm like, you know what? Nope. So I turned it off. Didn't look, didn't look again, um, obviously, until I had to update my spreadsheets later on after the market closed. So I kind of just took a day off the market. But um, but yeah, so let's look at the Tesla trades. So what you see here is a bunch of BCs and a bunch of SSs. So a BC type is buy to close. So when you look at the BC, you look go to the left, and then you see a C within the ticker. So that means it's a call. So they did a buy to close the call. So they closed the 177.50 call, 10,790 contracts. They paid three cents, so obviously that's a successful transaction. And then right below it, you see the SS, short sale, and then to the left, you see a call. So they essentially sold a call. And then the dates are the differential, so they, they, um, they sold a call into next week, 426 expiration. Um, and, you know, they got a $1.78 premium. So, again, the top one, BC, they paid the three cents to close. And then the bottom one right below that, they got, they received 178 in premium. So kind of the same thing right below it. BC, um, they closed, again, the same strike and everything, but, you know, they kind of did it in pieces. They did, they closed 9,770 contracts. And then, you know, even the last line, they closed the um, 20,555. These were all the contracts, by the way. And then they opened a new position but only with 9,770, it looks like they reserved 20,555, uh, which is good. Uh, I like that move. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so first TSLY. They did not touch their synthetic. So their synthetic 175, since Tesla went down yet again yesterday, um, it'll cost them 56 million to close. But again, that expires May 17th. The 170 will cost them 14.8 million, which again, expires May 17th. So let's get to the nitty gritty here. How did Tesla do yesterday? Uh, it went down, again, shocking, I know, very shocking. Uh, Tesla went down 1.06%, Tesla went down 0.91%. So that's what we would expect, right? Tesla would not go down as much as the underlying. All right, so all of those closures, they're up here, right? So they paid about, you know, it rounded up to, I guess, four cents. Yeah, four cents for two of them, and then 0 0.39741, which rounds up to four cents for the other one. But all in all, um, obviously, this is what it comes to, the call debit, which is not much. But if you look at the profit loss column, this is what they made on the transactions, right? All right, forget it. I'm not even going to try to highlight it. This is the beauty of doing it on the phone. Um, but yeah, they basically, you know, some quick math, five, seven, about seven million, 7.3, 4 million, whatever. So that's a win. So they had another win in the books, another weekly, uh, weekly call win, which is really good. Um, so <coughs> what did they do with the new positions? Well, they opened... Um, they use 10,790 contracts, and they also use 9,770 contracts, and they chose a 175 strike. And look at this. Look at this. They listened. You know, we spoke and they listened. 12.58% out of the money. That's a really, really good call. Why is that a good call? Well, we have earnings next week. I believe it's on Tuesday after hours. 
So this gives us the cushion we need. However, we, we, deal, we do still have two trading days for this week. So we don't know, you know, if Tesla could actually go up within those two days, essentially shrinking this cushion, or Tesla can go down increasing, you know, this cushion. So either way, um, I like it. I like what I see. You know what else I like is they did not use the other piece of um, the contracts. So they have some contracts now in reserve that they can use today or Friday and open a new strike because they don't know if Tesla is going to continue to go down. Like if Tesla goes down today, they're, they're going to probably choose a, you know, a lesser strike for the remaining contracts. If Tesla goes up today, then they'll use a higher strike. So um, I think it was a good move, you know, not using all the contracts right away. Uh, that's gonna that yields one point fifteen percent. So that's pretty good. Um, and they'll well, right now they did receive, uh, you know, about three point eight million, which is good, good stuff right there. Outstanding shares did not move. Cash really did not move. Uh, there's a new friend though. They opened a new treasury position. Um, in three of the four funds. Um, they did not open it in Misty. We'll get to that in a second. But um, but yeah, so they added 8 million. If you look at the cash standstill, if you look at the 613 treasury standstill, 1115 treasury standstill, $8,001. I'm sorry, 8 million one added to um, the 415, right? So where did they get the eight million? Let's see. Well, in this transaction, it was only three. So, you know, my guess is there, you know, was more activity. Right, four seventeen. Oh, I'm sorry. I was comparing two. Ah, the incorrect lines. Cash did go down. So eleven point four to six point nine. Okay, and then the other treasuries kind of moved a little bit, and then there it is. All right. Sounds good. All right. So yeah, they uh, they reduced the cash and they used some of the income from yesterday to put into the new treasury, which expires April 15th, 2025. Sorry about that. Um, cash and treasuries overall did go up 3.5 million. All right. So here's the recap on the weekly calls. Outstanding shares for uh, TSLY, 45 million, 700,000. Uh, income from the weekly calls, 19.4 million. Total distribution from that income, 43 cents per share. That produces a daily income of 4 cents, a daily yield of 0.27%. And if you annualize that, you're looking at 100% yield. So that's pretty good. All right, let's go to the active tab. Um, you know, we got, uh, you got the one strike so far, but don't worry, there's more contracts to go. So we're sitting at 20,560 contracts with a 177.50 strike. That's 14.18% out of the money, and that expires next Friday. Because, again, they closed all the contracts that expire tomorrow, which is the 19th. Uh, so nothing to look forward to for this week anymore, honestly, except the new position that they make. Tesla price, 155.45. 30-day IV stays pretty decent, higher than usual, 58%. Again, because of earnings coming up. Uh, Tesla price is 1409. So keep in mind, this is post reverse split. So in actuality, think about it that way. It's it's seven dollars in this, you know, around the seven dollar range, which, you know, that's it's tough. I get it. Uh, potential capital gains, two dollars, two dollars. And they're not even using all the contracts. So what a, what an opportunity. Like if you think Tesla's going to go up after earnings, and you like Tesla, this is this is your opportunity uh, to really get in at a good price and have potential capital gains. I'm, I gave them the thumbs up. That's me, right? I gave uh, the Tesla fund manager the thumbs up. Good move. Two, two reasons. Well, actually, no, three reasons. They closed out their positions because they were ahead way too much, right? They opened a new position. And not only did they open it, but they went way out of the money, 14 Point eight. Did they? Let me just make sure this sheet. Did they say twelve in the sheet? Twelve percent out of the money. Oh um, well. What price did it use? J. 
minus D. Strike 175. What strike did I use here? Oh, oh my God. I got the wrong strike in there. All right, let me just double check the uh, trades. Yeah, 175, 175, 170. Okay, yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. I had a, my son had a friend over when I got home when I was updating these sheets. So you can imagine, um, you know, me trying to think while, while doing that, while hearing them. But either way, okay, so they're 12.58% out of the money. So that's, you know, like I said, three reasons I'm, I'm giving the thumbs up. One, they closed the other funds early. Two, they chose a, a strike 12.58% out of money. And number three, this number here, 20 thousand five hundred fifty five unused contracts so we got that you know waiting to use ready to go money to be made what are they going to pick who knows again earnings next week april 23rd after hours curve i did check no change they're still sitting at the 101 contracts with a 210 strike that's 35 percent out of the money i don't know why they don't roll down i know the earnings is coming up but I mean, to be, to be honest, they get a, I don't know. I just, they don't, they got to be a little more active. That's, that's my thought. Anyway, uh, payment details for April for Tesla. Synthetic income, that's a 545000 income. Short call income, now 19.4 million. Net income, 19.9. So total income per share is 44 cents. 43 cents of that is from the short call income. So again, it's pretty good. Uh, we still have some time to make more money in the month. Outstanding holdings. Um, they have, again, the synthetic positions. We're not going to cover them, but they expire May 17th. And now they have just this one call uh, that expires next week. So we don't even need to talk about that. But if, as you can see, we have now another line because we have a 415 treasury. All right. Net asset value of this fund is six hundred and forty-three million. Um, that's the that's a NAV of fourteen oh eight, and that's a trade price of fourteen oh nine. Someone asked me. I went live on my uh, Discord yesterday. Not I didn't record. I just decided to go live on the way home to have a you know it's like a conference call of sorts, just to you know shoot the shit right. Um, so and people joined, which is awesome. Someone asked me. Should I care about the nav? And honestly, I didn't understand what he what he asked. But let me just answer the question here, right? When you say nav, are you talking about this breakdown? Are you talking about, you know, what I consider, you know, the little balance sheet here, the net asset value? Should you care about reviewing this? Is that if that is that what you're referencing? I mean, as an everyday investor, I would say no. Um, I mean, I cover it because again, I cover. I dive into everything with these funds uh, because I think it's important. Um, but as a regular everyday investor, you'll drive yourself crazy probably trying to do that. But or if you're talking about this, just the net, you know, essentially the the net asset value divided by outstanding shares, the NAV of 1408. Should you care about that? To me, the NAV is the trade price. Of course, yeah, you get a discount here and there, but I don't play that game. I don't play the premium discount game, but. Some people do. So again, I don't, sorry if I didn't understand the question properly, but um, I, again, for an everyday yield max investor, NAV is trade price. Should you care about NAV? I mean, obviously you should because it is the trade price, but again, I just did not understand the question. So I figured I'd cover it again um, because it was someone who asked the question. So let's move on. Anyway, I probably made it worse. So Misty also had a trade, so let's go to that trade. All right, so this is a very, very key day in Misty Fund, maybe the most important day of Misty Fund. So what you see is, where is it? So you see six, when you see 632 for Misty, you know that's big stuff. So if you look right down on the, was it the fourth line? They sold the call. They BC to put for 632 contracts and you see 1700. That's the synthetic. They closed the 1700 
synthetic. Good for them. Get it over with. Move on. Okay. But what's the damage? $510 per share. Oof. Hoofa. Hoofa. Nothing they could do though, man. MSTR is going down. All right. So they took a they took a whooping. Um, and they opened a new position for 1150 strike. And um, on the top, they had um, you know, they added 28 more to the 1150 because again, people are buying in, which is good. So and then they opened a, a new uh, you know, a call. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's get into the numbers. All right, are you ready for this? 1700, here it is. So in, in green, again, the green line, I use that as how much it costs to close up until it actually closes, and then I use it as the close number. So yesterday, April 17th, they closed it. They got, again, 510 a share, and they got 40 cents per share for the call. So they paid 32.2 million to close that baby out, ending April losses for this particular synthetic $28 million. So when all said and done, again, because they had credits when they added new positions. So, you know, yesterday, obviously, they, they paid $32 million, But all in all, for April, it, it was like a loss of $28 million for this synthetic. So that's very damaging. But again, you already see it in, in the price. So it's not like it's anything new. Because, um, again... It's it, it was on paper essentially. Now it's actually a trade, so it's a taxable event. They did it. They closed it. It's now a loss. It's an expense. It's in the books. All right. So I'm you know I'm happy they moved on because that was just pretty ugly to look at. So let's look at the new synthetic. Uh, they opened it with six hundred and thirty two. I don't know why I didn't put the six thirty two first, but either way. Um, they opened the 630, 632 contracts and they also added 28. So the call costed more than the put. So they started this one off at a debit, but that's normal. Typically they start at the new position. Um, but MSTR price is currently already above the strike. So the strike again is 1150 and this one expires May 17th. So it's only a month out, which again, I don't like that, but I know Jay did explain why, which, you know, that kind of over my head, to be honest, something with um, the rules about um, owning too much. I don't know. You go back and watch the interview. I think uh, maybe he was coach's interview, one of them. But either way, MSTR is currently at 1188.05. So, so that being said, how much does this synthetic work worth? Two point eight million, baby. Yeah, we're starting over. Here we go. All right, so let's go to the April tab before we see the really true ugliness. How did MSTR do yesterday? Uh, not good. MSTR went down five point two six percent. MSTY is actually under thirty dollars. It it went down four point seven six percent. So yeah, ugly. Ugly. This is one of the ugliest weeks I think I've seen in a while. Um, so they added 28 contracts. They chose a strike price of April 19th, right? You know, if you don't believe me, I'll go back. If you look here, see the 28, April 19th. Short sale, April 19th. So that's pretty crazy, right? Um, but they can because they're, they have very high IV. So it was worth it. They got $14 per share. They chose a 1290 strike, and that's 8.58% out of the money. So they went 8.58% out of the money with two trading days. So that leaves a recovery of 4% per day. That's really good. And they still yielded 1.18%. For what for two days. That's amazing. Uh they got a credit of 39200 All right, so here's the details. Let's go to cash and treasuries. Outstanding shares went up, so more people are still buying in 75,000 new shares. Cash went down. Um, they moved. Oh no, well, cash went down. You know why cash went down. Why do you think? They had to pay that massive debt. How much did they pay? How much did cash and treasuries go down? $32.9 million. Well, how much did the synthetic cost? $32.2 million. So there you go. There's our money. So cash and treasuries, you know, again, like I said, the NAV already showed it because it was reflected in the price. But since they actually closed out the synthetic, 
it's removed now from the cache, okay? So again, hopefully that makes sense because when it comes to the nav, the net asset value, we're adding cash, also adding how much it costs to close the position. So that cost to close is always in the net asset value. Again, hopefully that makes sense. I can, maybe I'll talk about it in the last tab when we get there, but um, yeah. So real quick though, the summary of the weekly calls for MSTY, 2.8 million outstanding shares, uh, total weekly call income, 4.6 million, total distribution, $1.66 per share, total daily income, 15 cents per share, total daily yield, 0.51%. And if you annualize that, 185%. So they're doing really good in the weekly calls. But of course they are because MSTR is tanking. All right, so what do we got here? We got a lot. We got a lot going on here. Uh, is this in order? Of course it's not. Um, 28 contracts with a 1290 strike. That's 8.58% out of the money. That's the lowest strike. All right, the next one, 65 contracts with a 1505 strike. That's 26% out of the money. And then we have, what, 22 contracts, 1635 strike, 37% out of the money. And the biggest position, 545 contracts, 1670 strike, 40% out of the money. So, yeah, they have room to grow. Are they going to grow? Probably not. MSTR price, 1188. 30-day IV, 124%. Uh, 30 day chart, not great. Remember how this chart was always good looking? Now it's ugly. MSTY price, 29.63. Bitcoin halving coming up. Um, I forgot to pull up the tracker again, but sorry guys. Uh, what do we got? We got the, uh, the, you know, potential capital gains. I mean, if you buy today and MSTR flies up, you have a potential capital gains of $11.18. That would be amazing. And MSTY price is at 29.63. So reaction is the Misty Fund Manager kind of has like a sigh of relief. They ripped off that Band-Aid, you know. They got rid of that ugly, ugly synthetic so they could sleep at night. So congrats to them. But now let's talk about the damage the synthetic has created. So here we go. Synthetic loss from April, 31 million. Ouch. Ew, ouch, all that. Short call income, 4.6 million. So total net income is not income. Total net loss is 26.4 million. So total income per share is actually a loss of 943. Short call income per share is $1.66. Um, and again, uh, real quick, just because they lost money on the synthetic, like a lot of money, like a ton of money, you're, you're still gonna get paid. So if you're wondering, is there still going to be a distribution? Of course there is. This is an income fund. How much are they going to pay you? Well, we should only now focus on the short call income. So I would say currently, I think they're going to pay around that $1.66 range. Of course, they could pay less because, again, the damage done from the, uh, you know, the synthetic is, is crazy. So now looking back one month, let's see. So last month they made 877 per share from the synthetic and they made 202 from the short call income and they paid 412. So obviously they used some of that synthetic income to make the distribution higher. So the question to you guys is should they have? Because now looking at this month, look how much the the you know the total income per share went you know down on the synthetic. You know, cuz now we're at a loss. So if they're going to pay us the $1.66 from the short call income, maybe they should have never paid some of that synthetic. I don't know. It's a good question, something to think about. Because, again, um, it's it can go either way. But that's just the question I have for you guys. Do you think that they should have, you know, because knowing crypto is very volatile, should they have taken some of that money from the synthetic income and paid it from the distribution? I mean, at the time, we were all like, yes, of course. Look at all this money they made. But, you know, as quick as MSTR goes up, it can go down just as quick. So here we are in that very, very position. So total net income, since I've been tracking it, since they opened the fund from day one, I'm showing a loss of $14.7 okay? And again, you know, it's still, it's still early in the month. Not that early, but... We'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens. So 
I'm happy uh, that synthetic is done and we can move on, to be honest. So yeah, as I was stating earlier, if you were, if you recall the, the pink from yesterday or days prior, that was always a massive number, right? That was like 30 million or whatever, pushing the net asset value down. You know, we now it's gone, right? So now that number is gone. But what, what went, uh, what also went down in return is our cash. So obviously it's gone, but yes, now it's reflected in the cash because we had to pay to close it. But now we have a nine point five million dollar put that costs, and then a call that's worth twelve, twelve uh, point four million. So it's it's a new start, <coughs> a fresh start to the new synthetic. So. Anyway, what do we got? We got uh, four calls that expire this Friday. What did I... Is that a call? Yeah, okay, the 1290. All right, the 1290. Wow, that's a... It costs a lot, 1553. But the three below that, they don't cost really much at all. And they're going to win on those, that's for sure. At least that's what I think. Net asset value on... Uh, Misty is 82.6 million. The NAV is 29.52. And the trade price is 29.63. So good stuff right there. That was a lot. I know Tesla and Misty took forever. I'm sorry, guys, but it's just, it was a lot, a lot to cover. So let's go to Coney. And just a reminder, guys, next month I'm going to go back to three funds. I have to. I'm sorry. So I am going to put out a poll at some point to ask you guys to let me know which ones you want me to stop covering. And the majority will win. I may or may not include NVIDIA with that since I just added NVIDIA because um, they're the GOAT. So I figured I'd, you know, maybe I should at least do them two months and not give you guys the option. Um, I mean, I, would, I think I should stop covering Misty. That's my thought because, you know, we have Coney. To me, Coney or Misty should probably go. I know Tesla, everyone hates Tesla lately, but Tesla is, you know, they're the godfather, right? They're, they're the ones that started it all. Plus, I wanted to cover them for a full year, and I'd like to see that through, but, you know, we'll see. Anyway, the Synthetic 260, no change, no trades, but right now we'd have to pay $79 because Coin is well below their strike of 260. Um, but again, that expires May 17th. All right, let's go to the April tab. Let's see what happened yesterday. Well, coin went down 2.31%. Coney went down 1.93%. So red day, not too terrible for coin. Um, let's go to outstanding shares. Uh, it went up 25,000. I think I hear my, the baby crying. Cash went in the negative. Why did it go in the negative? Well, they used cash to open the new position that is the 41525 Treasury. Uh, so they got 42 million there. So now we have three Treasuries and one money market bond. Overall, cash and Treasuries did go up by 617,000. Again, probably because they knew outstanding shares. Um, so, recap outstanding shares, 16,550,000. Total income, 14.4 million. Total distribution, 87 cents. Total daily income, 8 cents a day. Daily yield is 0.35%. And annualized that is 126%. All right, let's go to the active tab. So the active tab has three contracts all expiring this Friday. How are they doing? Well, you know, sell again, they sell calls. Selling calls is a bearish play. So if coin goes down, they are doing good. And as you can see, they are doing very good. So let's go from lowest to highest. The lowest strike, they have 500 contracts with a 260, 250 strike, 22% out of the money. And then they, their biggest position, 15,770 contracts with a 270 strike, that's 26% out of the money. And then Last but not least, 730 contracts with a 277.50 strike. That's 29% out of the money. I just realized I wasn't looking at pre-market for any of these. I'll do that all at the end. Coin price is 213.78, 30-day IV, 97%. 30-day chart, blah. So I'm gonna say is blah. Uh, Coney's 22.91. Woo, we're getting down to most people's cost basis here. So a lot of people probably gonna buy in. 
Having. Having is tomorrow, maybe? I don't know. Uh, potential capital gains for this week, $6.04. Which means, yeah, the, the money guy is there. They're making money on the weekly calls, and you can make money yourself. It's unusual, though. Uh, you know, yesterday... When I did the video, they had 690 unused contracts, and they didn't use them still. So they're still uh, just sitting there doing nothing. Surprised they didn't open something. Uh, but anyway, let's go to the details. Synthetic income, 17.9 million. Short call income, 14.4 million. Total net income, 32 million. So total income per share, $1.96. Total short call income per share, 87 cents. So... Coney's still looking good. Again, maybe that's, you know, obviously that's because their synthetic has not expired yet. They got a month. So they're pretty, uh, they got some time for this sell-off to end. I'm actually surprised. I thought the sell-off would happen after the halving. Not, not right before, but, you know, you can't time the market. Um, so, again, the synthetic I won't really get into. But if you look in blue, these are the calls that expire in two days. 13 cents is the most expensive one, all the way down to 4 cents. So, yeah, they're as of right now, they're looking good. They're going to win. And net asset value, $378.9 million. The NAV is $22.90, and the trade price is $22.91. So, that's Kony. Last but not least, NVIDIA. See, four funds. I mean, I'm doing way too much talking, right? Anyway, uh, NVIDIA, no trades, so nothing going on there. Just an update to the synthetic position. It would cost them $34 million to close. But again, theirs expires May 17th. NVIDIA price is well below their synthetic strike of nine fifteen. Here's the April tab. Let's see how NVIDIA did yesterday. NVIDIA did pretty ugly. Um, not good. It went down 3.87%, and NVIDIA went down 3.61%. So, so yeah. More of the same, right? Outstanding shares went up by about 150,000, so that's good. Cash is in the negative now. So, as you can imagine, yes, they added that 415 treasury. So, all the funds are doing it. Everybody's doing it, except Misty. Misty had enough of a crazy day, so they'll probably do it maybe today. Um, but either way, total cash and treasuries, what do we got? We got 3.8 million. Um, so, you know, that's... Uh, it's growing. It's still growing. Outstanding shares, $16.2 million. Total net income, $7.8 million. Distribution per share, $0.48. Cents. Daily income per share, $0.04. Cents. Daily yield, 0.17%. And if you annualize that, that's 62%. So we're looking good. The GOAT is still looking good. All right, where are we at heading into tomorrow? We have two trading days. Lowest strike, 100 contracts, $900. 7% out of the money. Biggest position by a long shot, 4,750 contracts, 920 strike, 9.48% out of the money. So both seem pretty safe, but a lot can happen in two days. NVIDIA price is 840.35. 30 day IV is the lowest of the bunch, 44.63%. NVIDIA price, man, that's a, that's, they hold up strong, 25.61. Potential capital gains, $2.41 for this week. NVIDIA GOAT, you know, NVIDIA's still the GOAT, so the fund manager still got that smirk all week. Even though it's a bloody week, he's still, he's like, I'm making money, what are you guys doing? April synthetic income, $3.2 million. Short call income, $7.8 million. Total net income, $11 million. All right, what does that come to per share? That's, the, that's what you guys care about, right? $0.68 cents with total income and $0.48 cents from the short call income. So yeah, pretty good. I don't know if we'll get a, we're not gonna get the $2 uh, distribution like we did last time. All right, so the synthetic I won't cover because again, that expires on May 17th, but short calls you see, they, co they both cost under a dollar per share to close. So they'll probably win those, although they are the tightest of the groups. But we shall see. Net asset value, $413.6 million. The NAV is $25.53. And the trade price is $25.61. I feel like I'm talking fast, but I feel like this video, these videos are getting too long. 
Um, I don't know if people watch the whole thing. Um, I should probably check the stats on that, to be honest. But I never really have time. But anyway, so that's the summary for NVIDIA. And let's go to the pre-markets for all of them, since I forgot. All right, we'll start in order. Who did we cover first? Tesla. So what do we got? More of the same. It's down 1.21% in the pre-market. It's at 153.50. And this is as of 6.13 a.m. As you can see, I'm running later than usual. So MSTR. Uh, more of the same for them, but they're only down 0.09%. They're at 1187. Okay, coin. Wow, coin is green by 0.14%. It's at 214.07. Last but not least, NVIDIA. Okay, they're green. They're up 0.46%. They're at 844.20. All right, so I don't know what to expect today. Again, pre-market pretty much means nothing. What matters is what happens when the market opens. But I think it's also good to look at because... Like if you see pre-market and something's up like 6% or down 6%, then obviously that's more than likely it's probably going to open, you know, in that same realm, in that same range. But when you see it's like up or down by a percent or two, it's not really relevant because a lot can change. You know, people change their minds, people doing stuff, and then who knows. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Again, I'm sorry these videos seem to be longer than usual. But there's just a lot to cover. Um, you know, I'll do my best to see if I can shorten them at some point. But again, I'm going to go down to three funds, just a reminder for next month. Because uh, to be honest, four is, this was the test to do four to see how it goes. And uh, it's a, it is too much. So three is the sweet spot for me. Um, just, you know, that I have time for. And again, I don't want to sacrifice my, my content, you know, just to add another fund. So... I'm going to have to cut one off at the end of April. Um, so again, I'll, I'll, I'll have the community vote, but I'll, I'll pick the ones that they'll vote on. You know, I have to, you know, maybe I'll just do Coney and Misty. I don't know. I got to think about it. But if you, feel free to provide input now on that, by the way, if you guys want. But as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. If you did, um, you can hit the like button. If you didn't, feel free to cry in the comments, as others do. Um, you know, it's all good. Comment is a comment, right? A like's a like. A view's a view. So it is what it is. But um, keyword, well, they rolled, I guess, right? They rolled. That's it. Misty rolled that synthetic. They closed out the old. They opened the new. So they rolled. So that is the keyword. Uh, anyway, hopefully the markets flip. Hopefully they flip green. You know, this red is getting old, but who knows? It could last this week. It could last next week. We don't know, right? So um, hopefully I have cash to buy, but uh, I do not. I have some, but not enough. Uh, but anyway, let me go. I got to start work soon and uh, help upstairs. Uh, but either way, again, thank you for watching. If you made it this long, I do greatly appreciate it. If you want to help the channel, I do sometimes post these on my Twitter, so feel free to follow me on Twitter and retweet it or just share it randomly in groups that you're in that talk about dividend stocks. All right. Thanks again, guys. I got to go. Have a great day. Later.